Sup y'all, so I got this hat. It's got mushrooms on it. But that's not the point of this video. <clears throat> Excuse me. So as some of you may know, Noah had to go through an emergency surgery and he almost died twice. And I'm not even exaggerating. He just got back from his surgery and he's up now in the common area. So we wanted to say thank you for all the support that you guys were giving him and then thank you for your patience for helping us because it's just us three here. We don't have like a thousand person team, people running the channels and doing stuff. So thank you very much. Of course the vlogs are continuing, but just giving you guys a little inside scoop of what happened. We're gonna find out from Noah exactly what happened. We haven't even talked to him. We don't even know what the hell he went through, but all I know is that this motherfucker was dead on the on an operating table. Yeah, it was just like a regular day we were at the gym and then we, Noah texts us a picture of him on the hospital bed I was like what what's going on so crazy you know you, you never know what life has in store for you so if your body is like hurting or telling you something listen to it because like this experience kind of like opened our eyes up and kind of like let us take a step back but let's go check on Noah for those of you who don't know like a lot of the behind the scenes stuff is all like Noah does he does a lot of the editing and this and that so just letting you guys know keep me posted that you know this is what we're going through some real life stuff right now but yeah and no oh my god He's dead? just sleeping, right? Oh, is he dead or sleeping? Hold on. He's sleeping, right? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I was about to stay in character, and then sometimes acting with these guys are too funny. They're like, I can't hold it. Damn. Hey, hello. Yes, I'm still wearing the same gown that they gave me from the <laughs> hospital. And then they told me, hey, you can just change into your clothes. I think this, you know, for those that don't know, you'd only know what happened to me if you followed all of us on Instagram. Besides the point, I got ruled out with appendicitis, which means that my appendix was ruptured and it needed to be removed immediately how did i even know that i had this and that i needed to go to the hospital oh let me kind of give you the timeline so saturday morning i woke up at like 4 a.m i had to go pee and instantly when i was you're just sleepwalking to the bathroom and as soon as i tried to pee it was difficult to just release it and then when i did pee it was hurting not the pee itself but the constant just trying to push it through my gallbladder i also felt like i had to poop and then i tried to do that and it hurt so bad that i stopped went back to bed 4 a.m to 7 a.m i'm just tossing and turning wake up at 7 i'm like okay I like really got to go to the bathroom, sit down again to just urinate or to, to my bowel movements. I was like, whoa, there are excruciating pains in my abdominal area below the belly button right before my shaft. And I was just there like, hey, yo, like there is some some sharp burning sensation going on in here. And then I actually was able to make a bowel movement and then urinate. But the entire time I let that happen, it was the most excruciating pain ever. And I literally stopped. I, I had so much more left to release. I stopped it. I was like, okay, not good, not good. Okay, my body hurts. What do you do when your body hurts? Pop a Tylenol. Let's do Tylenol ibuprofen. So I took a Tylenol real quick and then like 30 minutes subsided. And I was like, oh, nothing to worry about. Good to go. Back to my day. And then I went to I went to go to the mall. And then as soon as I walked into the mall, it like kicked in again. I was like, oh, I can't like stand up properly. Like now I'm like not even able to like stand and I'm like hunched over. I'm trying to find the restroom and you know there's something wrong with your body when you can't focus on anything else like i'm in my own main character head where i'm like oh everything is noised out nothing's distracting me that's out there like i don't care about that shoe i don't care about the smell i don't care about all these lights whatever so i'm in bloomingdale's and i'm like trying to find the nearest bathroom i go to the bathroom i literally have to put my hands up on the stall and i'm like why does there need to be effort involved to urinate this does not make sense so instantly in my head i'm like okay maybe i have a uti maybe there's some type of urine urination infection and i like press on a thing i let some out and then i have to stop because it just hurts again so bad so you get the theme there's a repetitive theme difficult to urinate difficult to poop not good so then after that i was like damn i swallowed the pill of guess i gotta go to the hospital and some people maybe not like me to me hospitals are scary i just kind of have to like fingers crossed just hope that it goes well so i was like this is the last thing i want to do i was trying to see how long i could tolerate this pain from the morning but after that i was like okay there's clearly something wrong with me i drove to the hospital and i'm like just sitting in the passenger seat like hey yo like this is getting worse by the second get to the er i'm laying down they're instantly doing all the tests on me real quick they're like all right let's do the blood test let's do a cat scan let's do a, a urine sample so i'm getting treated very very well very very quick because they see that the pain level is out of 10 comes everything comes back clear your urination is fine there's no uti your kidneys are good your blood work your cells are fine there's no kidney stones you don't have any problem with your kidneys no aids no aids that's good to hear actually and then i'm laying there and they're like yeah so your record's 
is look good. You should be good to go. Meanwhile, the entire time I was waiting for my results, it was only getting worse and my body started shivering. I was getting the fever. I was like, can y'all check my fever? The doctor checks my fever. It's at 104. I'm like, yeah, oh, that's not good. Like, how am I have a fever yet you guys are telling me that everything's clear? And they're like, okay, do another urine sample. Bro, this is what hurts. So I go back, try to do a urine sample. Unfortunately, I have so much urine in my body that wants to come out, but to let it out, like I said, it just hurts. So I let out as much as I can. I just, it felt like somebody had cut open a wound, just put salt on it, and you're just like, count to 10, just do it. Just just, just hold your breath, just let it go. So I, I, I fill up the bottle and I stop it. But I had so much left and I'm literally, this is a photo that I'll just share right here. Boom, this is me in the bathroom. I took a selfie of me like, I don't know why I was just like a it was such a bad moment that I was like let me flick myself up real quick anyways I put the urine thing back I lay down on the bed again urine comes back fine but meanwhile I'm on the bed the doctor's like trying to give me the wrap up the notes I'm like you're good just take it easy and I'm there like yo and then all of a sudden my body starts crying and I'm in my head like I'm not trying to cry I just like get into this position I'm like oh fuck I, at this point, they're trying to tell the doctors like, hey, like he's literally crying. Y'all gotta run some other test or something. They're like, okay, let's give him an IV. So they start giving an IV a little bit. Okay, cool. I'm feeling like not super nauseous and stuff. I wasn't even that nauseous to begin with, but the pain that is radiating in this lower abdominal is literally just increasing by the second. And I'm just laying under here like, oh my God, what, is, what the hell is going on? Eventually, main doctor comes back in. He said, okay, this is weird. How do you have a fever now in your, this area? Let me, let me examine you. He's pressing this. He's like, over here, your kidneys hurt. I'm like, no, it's right here. Pressing my gallbladder. I'm like, yes, I don't know what, but something's there. They're like, strange. All your results from the CAT scan says it's good. Uh, and then they're like, okay, we have one more option. We're going to give you these two big bottles that you need to consume in the next two hours. And then we're going to run one more CAT scan. So the fluids that I had to drink were supposedly going to make everything in the CAT scan appear more prominent so they can see everything more clearly than just the first go around test they had done. So I drink those things as fast as I can, but keep in mind, they were very, very big bottles. So I'm doing my best. And then they're like, all right, we're gonna admit you for the night. I was like, oh shit, this isn't a, y'all can't just tell me to answer like right now we get it moving. So then they come in with the little bed thing. They push me all the way upstairs to another room. They're like, this will be a room for the night. I was like, I don't even know what's wrong with me yet. And I'm like, damn, I'm gonna have to stay here for a whole night. I had tickets for Creed 3 at 7.30. What was going through your head like when they said, all right, like when everything was going so quick where it's like, now you gotta stay here and we gotta do this. It was hard to process. And I think I was just like, damn, I guess this is more serious than I thought because if I have to stay the night that means they don't have enough answers and that also scaring me because I'm like I just still don't know what it is but yeah it was uh I didn't want to accept that I had to keep staying there and that means your bill's going up too yes and I'm <laughs> like I'm like well I already did a CAT scan I'm about to do a second one and then they already did one IV on me I'm gonna need more I'm just trying to like uh you know my insurance is covering this we'll see but at that point I'm paying for anything I need I'm like bro give me anything <laughs> I'll pay for it later six figures I could have done with one less CAT scan, y'all tripping. You didn't need to do three CAT scans. Well, if you think about that, like they didn't have to do multiple CAT scans. They could have got it in the first one if they did the right test. Because my first CAT scan compared to my second was completely different. My first one was in for a minute, out. The second one, before I went in, they gave me some special IV. And then I sat there for five minutes and it went up and back around and around. So yeah, because why not do the specialized one first and just get it out the way? But assuming that I could get to get everything you need to know. Or do you up. think that they thought I was capping based off all his reports say he's normal. But then again, they did that off rip. They just gave me the basic one off the jump. So I don't know, that just shows you sometimes you can have something under the rug that's kind of sweep that nobody sees. And then, yeah, so they did my second CAT scan, that one, um, and then they bring me back to the bedroom. I'm just laying there on the bed like, ah, okay, what's gonna happen? There's a surgeon that walks in. Say, like, hi, I'm the, I'm the, I'm I'm your doctor. Uh, I'll, I'll be performing surgery on you if needed tonight. And I was like, mm hmm what do you mean? It's like, so basically there's three options for what could be happening right now one there could be something wrong with your appendix we'll have to wait until the results are clear two you might have something linked to chrome disease i'm not really leaning towards that but that's the possibility or three you're there's nothing and you just you'll go home in five to ten days you'll feel something or you won't and i was like oh my. thanks doc isn't that crazy how you can be told that like a doctor could tell you that when you're actually had a bursted appendix in your stomach just chilling there like they don't sometimes they don't even know it's like they'll be like one second they'll step out research come back in <laughs> this is what you got i'm like 
like, you're in the dark there, bro. <laughs> on, some, on some WebMD. <laughs> on some WebMD. <laughs> yeah, had I not like budged a little bit earlier in the ER before they said nothing was wrong with me, then they were really bad to release me after like three hours laying there. But I literally, after based off the fevers, thank God I got a fever. That was enough to kind of prove like, oh, this is more serious than it should be. And then obviously showing that there's an area that they examined that whatever they say is fine, isn't fine that I'm feeling. So then I'm laying there on the bed, get the call from the surgeon. He's like, hey, no, I just want to inform you that, um, yeah, you're, uh, you have appendicitis and your appendix is ruptured and we're going to need to do emergency surgery within the hour. Thank you. I hang up the phone. I'm like, what? This morning, I just thought it was just one of those mornings that was just hard to pee or something out of nowhere. It's a good life lesson to listen to your body and to when you're at the doctors to let them know every detail, let them know how you feel. Because like you said, it could be intimidating for a lot of people to it go is, into yeah. the doctor's office. So it's like if they say, hey, like, I think you should be fine. Sometimes they don't really know. And it's like you truly know how your body yeah. is. And if it feels off, it's off. And that's good that you stayed there because it only makes me think what would have happened if they sent you home or you know what I mean like because mine was bursted it could have literally been waiting too long infected areas impossible from surgery at the right spot or worst case scenario it hits a spot that it shouldn't death it's a it's a very very weird thing to just say now that like I'm on the road to recovery but like wow that was Saturday it's Wednesday it's crazy how fast everything unraveled but no yeah it, it isn't like Rob said like I'm laying there and I'm I'm trying to answer all their questions like pain here i'm like no yes but then when they're walking away in my head i'm like no no i gotta like speak up because i can tell they're giving me all these positive they're give, telling me everything's positive but there's something wrong with me so yeah make sure you don't just get left you know empty-handed if you know that there's something more serious deep down that only you know so obviously they couldn't see it but me describing it and pushing a little bit more gave them the reason to then take check on me even more than they already were so but yeah the, one of the nurses that did come in of course she had to tell me this before this nurse comes in and i started the conversation conversation of, hey, so I'm young, apparently I'm gonna have surgery tonight, boom, they said something's wrong with my appendix. Is there anybody else my age, or does this happen frequently to people my age that are like, you know, health, very active, no previous medical history, no allergies, like plenty of water, like getting all the necessity things I need to do. She was like, actually, yes, there was a woman, I think down the hall this uh, last week, she was 25 too, just like you. She came in a week late with an infected UTI. Don't know why she waited that long, but she came in too late. We were about to do surgery on her and she passed passed out and then as we're doing surgery on her things went really left and just let's just say the infection spread to areas that it should not have spread and we had to end up severing all of her limbs bruh uh, come on man Let me turn this light i need a minute man give me one minute man i need a minute after that one but see that's a week that's a week too long of a wait. And that's not even the appendix, that's a UTI. That's something was burning from whatever, maybe it was through sexual intercourse, maybe she held in her urine for too long. I don't know, there's different ways you can get a UTI. Your body acts quick, like I, it just shows you how fast if something's not working, it can go real fast. You know, you can get, you can get, you can find out something happened yesterday, don't get it treated, boom, boom. But she told me that and I was like, is she like, how did she feel about it? like it, I didn't even like it was such a hard I don't know how I even respond to that I was like life without limbs you got to really be a warrior she was like yeah she woke up in therapy and she's going to therapy now and she's fine I was like I would like to speak with her bless this girl I hope to she out there somewhere she out there somewhere I hope you were doing fantastic but I wake up from surgery and they're like yeah everything's successful everything went great I'm like oh great you try to grab your phone yeah what time is and I'm not, I'm not making fun. I'm just saying. I mean, that's what it is. Can you, can you imagine? Can you imagine? Because I put that on my my uh, spam Instagram where Noah told me that about the girl with no limbs. Bruh. I was it like, was a week ago. They were like, they cut, they cut them off last week. Last week. I was like, man, the concept of going in there because you have a UTI yeah. and they cut off your arms and legs and that's it. And you're left there. And you're 25 till the rest of your morality. Bruh. You are a paraplegic. That's just what it is. I told some people about that. They were like, yeah, I know. Like, and now I don't know if there's anyone watching this with no arms and no legs. I mean, I'm assuming that's a rare thing. That's gotta be low percent. If you're born, we just said this, if you're born with that, I'm assuming it's easier to deal with, but going yeah, from your this- Your whole life to- 
And no, no offense, I was just doing the, no, wait a minute. It's like, it makes all of my issues, like, oh, I'm worried about this, and well, that's upsetting me, and this and that. You got arms. I have arms, bruh. And legs. Like, try telling the girl who had all her limbs amputated how hard your life is. Like, you can't. Go up to her in the hospital bed, she can't even do nothing. Anything you Can say- you have a child in that? Like, is your, is your body strong enough? Like, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. I just, there's obviously so many milestones in so many ways that she obviously probably had an ideal pan out of her life and that moment hit and it just changes everything. It's good to know though, because that could happen to anybody. Yeah. Yeah, and you would assume it's more rare, but. And honestly, since it, living it in is. LA, I've, besides me like spraining, like fracturing my hand and spraining my foot and hand and a couple other times, I like never did yearly checkups and I didn't get a primary doctor for after the third year here. That's not like good to do. I, I just was like, oh, the doctor's checkup. Yeah, no, your health is like, is no joke. You can't play around with that. If you don't have insurance, you'll be paying up the ass to get a scan of some sort. You also need insurance or else some hostels won't accept you or you're good luck with that bill. Imagine that, all your limbs gone, the doctor. Hey Noah, how you doing? Well, I know you got no arms and legs, but. I'm a little hungry. Okay, well the nurse is gonna bring you some food. Just wanted to give you the bill here. Bill? Uh, oh my. Um, You didn't have insurance or? or... Oh, it's expired? Yeah, th there's something happened where there's no insurance, but um, oh. here's your bill. Oh, I am so sorry, it's, I, I Sorry with the hands. Um, so the total is gonna be right there. $122,000? Per limb. And if I could just get you real quick. I know, I think they're expensive, but you know. If I could just get you a sign right there. Oh, I'm so sorry, I forgot again. Um, we can get we can get someone to, this doesn't have to be signed right now. But yeah, uh, if you need any help, the emergency button's right there. <gasps> Sorry, I'm, can we keep it a buck and see how, and I'm trying to show. Damn, she's probably watching this right now. Like, banging her head. But, hey, that's just a, it's not like she was born with that. That just happened, so. And that, that's not, that's just one case that I've heard about. That means it's been, there's, there's more people happening into it. I don't know. So I was just, I felt, I felt really bad about that. And like, anyone I told that, they were like, bro, don't even wake me back up. That's, that's what I said. I said, can you ask the doctor to give you some like exit pill just to go out? And she was like, no, they're not, they're not like actually allowed to do it. Unless you are being breathe with only tubes and you're almost brain dead or you are brain dead those are like the only cases where it's like if he's already a vegetable you can pull him or if he's just turned brain dead and you're just breathing out with the ventilators take him out so stuff like that makes me appreciate life a little bit more and what i'm given yep no it's like uh, damn it's just kind of like how i feel already just based off the quick couple days yeah do you feel like you have a new view on life after that because that's like yeah, a life altering I, experience I mean, yeah, after three days later and then just in the car right on the way back all i could really do is like like laugh and smile in my head and just look out the window like I'm just listening to music and it just sounds amazing because I'm like damn all the feelings that I got and stuff with this it's a weird uh, I don't even have the words for it but everything's so fast boom and now boom is done but boom if it if it didn't get done soon enough I'd be done so it's like having this like self deprecating guilt of like is this like I've never been in a position where it's like oh people should or could be wor should be worried about me right now but I don't like all that pressure I don't like damn I got things to do I got this but I'm like Oh wow, this is a yeah, because it's not just a common cold you got. Nah, and it just you, you went there to expect. Okay, I'll get some antibiotics. Oh, they'll give me a different answer that's a little easier to solve. Ice it or something. I don't know. Clearly that wasn't the case, but yeah, it it just happened so fast, so randomly, so left field that even at even like to right now, I'm just like okay, like. If I wasn't here, if they didn't make it or something, this day would just kept going on, and then it's like boom on a random Saturday, the guys, my friends, family, you guys are just like oh. That's it. Like, I don't know. It's just that like, I'm obviously not going to think dark. Obviously, I, I'm completely 100% happy and thankful everything went completely well. But yeah, I'll just give you a, I'll try to speed through the surgery. So after I hear the limb story. I'm sorry I had to envelop into, I had to go deep into the limb story. I just thought that was the most crazy thing I had ever heard. No, I, same. I, explaining it again, even telling you guys, I was like, this is weird to say, because I'm still pre-surgery. I hear this and I'm like, I don't know what to process. I don't imagine process. getting that news, like you're the one getting your limbs cut off. Like I wouldn't know how to process that information. Or I'm over here like, what if I don't even wake up now from the surgery? I don't know, but <laughs> you're trying not to think bad, but your intrusive thoughts are always there. And it's like, all of your limbs, bro? At least give me the one Like leg. dude, one, even a finger, is catastrophic in certain ways. Like, let alone a hand, 
which would be even crazier. Even being able to, Big Dawes can't bend his um elbow past this he angle. Because he yeah. shattered his elbow. Even that is life altering. You, now you can't bench press ever yep. again. Now you can't that do a push up. never get fully strong no matter how healed it is. And you telling me all limbs? Are you kidding me? So, after I heard that limb story, I'm still processing that, oh, well, I have to get my surgery done within an hour. Nothing I can do about it. Time goes by. They bring in the bed for me. Or no, no, they just take me from the bed from my room. I was like, oh, do I have to get up? They're like, no, we're just gonna take you. And I'm like, oh, great. Just lower my bed. And they just push me out the second floor, get into the elevator, go downstairs. Boom, I go into the room, meet the surgeon. He's got his little scrub on before the surgery room. He's like, anything you're feeling or need to let us know before we do this? I was like, I gotta pee again. Should I do that? They're like, oh yeah, you need to empty your bladder because if it's filled with that, that could be bad when we're going in there and could spill. And I was like, okay, cool. So then I hop off the bed. I skirt all the way to the far bathroom down the hallway. I was, it was just like a moment where I was like, oh, I'm isolated for a quick brief moment with myself. I get in the bathroom, sitting down, peeing, helped a little bit, still bad pain. At this time I had a couple painkillers and IV in me. So it wasn't terrible before going to surgery. I wasn't like I was two hours early when they had no idea what was going on. And I'm there just letting it out, but I'm like taking my time. Cause I'm like, oh man, I've never had surgery. I'm sure there's people out here, people that are watching that have had stuff or know more things than me about this. And I don't have any recollection of what is that like after, before. So I'm just sitting there taking my time. I just here on the hallway. So you ready yet? What are they doing? And I'm like, just a minute. I'm just... I get up and just like cripple walking all the way back to the bed. I get into my bed they push me into the operating room and i just see like the six people with just hands by their side i'm just like looking up i'm Damn. like oh my god i felt like i was in a pov like a gray's anatomy episode or something i'm like dang they're all here for me but then in my head i was like no they're here to save me right yeah, I lay on the, uh, the surgery bed and then I started getting the chills again. I was like, y'all got anything? They're like, oh yeah, we're about to take care of you. Then they start putting on these warm ass towels over we're my- We're about to take care of you. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna take care of you, that? <laughs> they put these warm towels over my legs, my arms, and then they put a blanket over me and they started blowing hot air. And I was like, this feel kind of nice. <laughs> I was like, this is some top treatment. I feel like I'm at a spa. I wanna massage my back while you're at it. I need to burst my appendix more often. <laughs> So then I'm laying there. They have the IV that's right in my arm. They take the what's called anesthetic propofol and they put the first dose in me. I'm laying down, just like three faces. How you feeling? I'm good. Ready to get it going when you guys are. Like two minutes go by, they're like looking at each other. You, you good? I was like, yep. Like, oh man, you gotta give them more dosage. And I was like, damn, I needed more to knock me out. So they put in another one. And then after that, it was a very slow, I was like, oh yeah, that thing's in there. And then you already have the warm towel, warm, comfortable position. And then I just z -z -z, faded away straight to black. Felt pretty quick, didn't feel long, didn't feel short. So what they gave me, they don't use it for every surgery. It's called anesthetic propofol. This thing, the surgeon told me after I came back, it turns your brain off completely. There's no activity, nothing. So like when you go to sleep at night, you have REM sleep. So you're asleep, but your mind is still working to make sure your heart breathes, to recover yourself. This stuff just, you're just off. And he's like, yes. And then we, after your brain's off, you got about, we had about like two to five minutes to kind of like give you air before your heart stops pumping because your brain can't tell you to tell your heart to pump oxygen. So then they stuff a tube down my throat, connect to my trachea, and they're just pumping in oxygen into my body just to have my heart pump. And they're like, yeah, so the only thing that was working for those 35 minutes was just your heart. It was just your heart the whole time. And I'm like, whoa, Damn. I was straight up brain off. I'll just say that. I'm not going to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Michael Jackson was on like a 60 day streak having a doctor that ethically shouldn't have been giving it to him every single night to go to sleep. He also took a whole bunch of other pills and stuff, but that's besides the point. He had no medical issues as whatever. I don't know. Anyways, get off track. King, King of Pop. King of Pop. Michael, Michael Jackson, he was about to do one last tour. But it made you sleep well. Yes. So I woke up. Um, they were like, you're going to feel exhausted from this. You'll be a little loopy. I woke up and I was like, whoa, I had felt like I had the best eight to 10 hour perfect sleep this past three years. Like it wasn't like you wake up when you oversleep and you're like oh you're rested but you slept a little bit more than you should i it felt like the best sleep of my life and then yeah i went back to my room i was doing math problems in my head i was like i still got it 12 times 12 <laughs> 44 ask me a question nerds i was like i'm ready to go and then everybody left they're like all right you get some great sleep yeah then just uh i was there for two more nights they had to just make sure they monitor me with new ivs to check how i was going after the surgery is where the surgeon told me yeah your appendix had bursted so the whole day prior that i'm feeling pain and nobody has any answers my appendix had already bursted and was doing its thing bacteria and whatever trying to infect me do its thing they didn't they can't even tell that through the cat scan they could tell it was ruptured but when the surgeon said he did the surgery he's like oh yeah we noticed it was everywhere so i was just like dang my thing really just 
popped. So it's terrifying to think about after the fact. I'm also happy that everything got done so fast because I was reading too many comments on videos of people that had the same surgery and one guy was like, yeah, I was supposed to get mine taken out at night, but my doctor wanted to feel fresh the next morning. I okay, makes sense. The doctor he wants to make sure you sharp, doesn't mess up the surgery, whatever. But yeah, the next morning, the guy in the comment was just like, yeah, I ended up staying for like 29 days more because it had spread to more areas. And I was like, holy crap. Another girl said hers bursted when she was 15, but she waited five days to go to the doctors. And then once she did, they couldn't even do surgery on her right away because it had spread too much that she had to stay for like 19 days. And they only had a, she only had a 10% survival rate. And I'm like reading this like, damn, this is the same thing that I had, but mine got taken care of. And I'm like, wow. And I didn't realize how common it was after I posted a picture of so many of you guys had reached out and said, I had it, bro. It's good. Worst pain in my life. First week sucks. Make sure you're doing this, this, this. Take care of yourself. Speedy recovery. So it's a very common thing to somebody like me. I never experienced that. It was like, oh, but then the next day there were just a couple slip ups in my private room. The first one was this guy came in to take my blood at like 6 a.m. And he like took four bottles of blood like this big, puts them aside. He looks at him. Oh, I did that wrong. Chucks them does it again. I'm there like, dang, bro, not all my blood. I guess your heart's gonna constantly pump and give you a new one, but I was like, that was still a lot, my man. I don't know how long it's gonna take to make back. That happens. The other one was this young nurse came in. She's like, all right, trying to give you new painkillers. She go, instead of going to the tube that has to drip long, there's like a second tube that's just instantly just do it faster here. She puts in the painkiller, puts it in, and then she's like, all right, I'll come back for the next hour to update it. I'm like, hey, yo, it's on fire. It felt like Tabasco sauce had been injected into my arm. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then the IV's like, pumping faster than normal. Usually it's like a little drip and it just slowly takes hours to be done. This thing's like going in, I'm like, um, button, button, help, help, help. What's the problem? My, my arm's burning from the IV. Okay, yeah, we'll send somebody. Then I hear it from the hallway. You didn't dilute the painkiller? You didn't give him the saline? I could have killed him. Huh, what? You're sitting there. I, I, it's going into your whole body. It's going, and it's going fast and it's burning on there like. Yeah, it's at my heart. Yep. <laughs> yep. I oh. feel it. Now yep. going up my chest. <laughs> there it is. Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. Michael Jackson. <laughs> See you oh. soon. Tell my dick. God damn it. <laughs> Old nurse comes in. She's like, let me teach you what you need to be doing. And I'm like, teach her? Does she not? know? Nope. Anyways, they're fixing all the stuff. An older lady comes in, puts in quick, whether it was Celine or whatever to help dilute it, puts in a whole bunch real fast. And it slowly goes away, but for a good five minutes. And then she looks at the IV machine and she's like, you have it on 270, it needs to be on 150. Cause 150, I guess is the correct speed. And I'm there like, Oh my God. What if I didn't press that button and I just sat there and accept? I couldn't, because again, pain, that's the thing. You have to speak up even after I had surgery. You need to make sure you're letting the doctor know everything you're feeling, no matter what. I was feeling good. They were on point with the food, bringing it consistently. I could talk to people whenever I wanted. And then there's no visitors allowed. So then I'm just laying there. And then this guy that looks like Skippy, you guys don't know who Skippy is, just type in Skippy on Google, that's it. Skippy walks in, uh, he sits down and he just kind of looks at me and he's like, hey, how's it going? My name's whatever, whatever, how you feeling? Like, ah, good, surgery went well, happy. So my incision still hurts really bad. Do you suggest I get like more painkiller? Oh, I don't know anything about that. I'm, I don't have a medical license or anything. <laughs> I'm there and he already came in and shut the curtain, sat down. Oh, uh, you didn't go to like medical school? You didn't, um, you don't know like if, you don't know like what this could be or why it hurts a little more than usual. Oh no, medical school, that's too long. That'd be too hard to do. I, I'm there like, hey yo. Oh, and you are. And you're who? <laughs> and your badge is like flipped upside down. I'm like, dang, I, I'm on painkillers. I'm hooked up to IV. If I run, this thing comes out. I'm already, I can't do it. I'm like, what is he here for? And then he's not saying anything. And I'm a little nervous right now. Cause I'm like, I don't know what to say. I can't fight this dude. I'm literally like, this is the best position for me to be in for him to do something to me. I'm just laying there. He's just looking around, breathing. I feel like if you come into my room, cause there's so many people coming in and out, checking on my recovery. Like everybody introduced themselves and let me know who they are, why they're here, what, what the deal is. He wasn't giving me anything. So I'm just sitting there kind of confused. And then I was like, so what, what's your, what's your role here? Oh, I'm the emotional support guy. Just been making my rounds around the floor. Oh, okay, okay. So we're just, what are we supposed to do? He's like, I mean, I could just sit here, um, talk about something, just here for support. In my head, yo, dude, <laughs> I feel worse now. Maybe come in and address exactly who you were off the jump and state I'm the most support guy, which means I'm here to talk about this. If you don't want to be here, I can like, you gave me nothing. It almost makes it seem more serious when it's like, you have someone in there to go and talk to me. I'm like, I, just, I thought I just got my appendix out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh no, no, like I'm I'm here, man. Yeah. Like, I'm good, like nothing. Makes you feel like you're gonna, like you're dying or something. Like, yeah. oh no, no, or no, like, is, I'm there, is there something I don't know? So then I kind of said, whatever. 
whatever and kind of talked as long as I could until he was like, oh, somebody's had a stroke at 304, gotta go. See you, man, had a great time. He left and then other nurse came back in and I was like, yeah, there was like a emotional support guy. It was like kind of awkward, kind of freaked me out, didn't really like explain what he was. And I figured it out later and then she was like, oh, you mean an emotional support dog? Oh, that's so cool, they brought the dog around. No, no, it was like a dude, short guy, bald. Oh no, there's not supposed to be anybody on this floor that does that. And I was like, what the, <laughs> what the fuck is happening right now? Did I just make this all up or is this guy just gone? I don't know. Anyways, that happened and then I was there for one more night. Next morning, everything's normal, man. You're good. You're gonna just, uh, lots of rest, no strenuous activities. Obviously, don't want your stitches coming open or nothing. And you're gonna be on some antibiotics for a little bit. I'm like, okay, cool. They took the IV out, wheelchaired me, and then I drove home. As soon as I got back home at like three o'clock, knocked out to like 8 p.m., woke up for a little bit, knocked out. Was sweating all night the first night back. But then I was told that's okay. It's just like your body healing itself. It's all the toxins, just being released. And then peeing and pooping hasn't been hurting as bad. I'm still having diarrhea because of those drinks they made me consume. And uh, yeah, all I can really do is just recover now. I'm at my best right now. A couple days before, laughing or coughing, the spot with her a little, little too much and walking was too hard. You wanna but... show him how you have to walk now? Yeah. yeah let's see. Here we go. Since he's recovering. Not as bad today, but because the incision is still pretty sore here, I, I do a lot of this like weird weight distribution and like a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left. Cause that must feel weird having incisions so in your stomach if you've weird. never felt that before too. And my stomach is stuck in a like permanent bloated position because when you have surgery, they have to fill you up with all this gas because they have to go in there and take it out. And then it just takes like two or three weeks to go away. And I'm like, damn. So now sitting is honestly the best. Sitting up straight, sitting in a chair, and then just kind of laying down is the best thing. But yeah, they did. But they also said you can't lay down too long because then your lungs get weak. And then if they're too weak, they won't be enough to recover in time. And then you can go back to getting chills and all that stuff. And I was like, yo, anybody that's had this before, let me know how y'all's recovery went. Y'all can't cap that, that pain before the surgery. Pretty brutal. Pretty and you brutal. said the stomach bloating, how long does that last for? Like two, three weeks. I don't know, it feels like, feels like all my organs are just like out forward, so. <laughs> it's funny, cause I can relate to that, but it's not cause of the appendix, it's cause of uh, Krispy Kreme donuts, where it's like the bloating, like permanent bloat. So yeah. I can- Yeah, that, that'll kinda like make it a little faster. If you wanna experience what that's like, just follow the Ryan diet. Yeah, if you do that, you get the kinda same bloating type of feeling. Well, yeah, so that is my surgery story. A, hey, first hey. one to have surgery. So make sure you guys go and spam Noah's Instagram picture of him in the hospital. Cause now we're capitalizing on this. Thank you, Noah. Thank you. Now well, we got a video. Now we got a thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> and now, thanks, guys. <laughs> you could use me for this. <laughs> and now Rob and I are gonna have to come up with an ailment. Yeah. People, YouTubers be faking illnesses. Bro. Wasn't wasn't there people that fake suicides? They wrote a suicide note. People have actually faked their deaths, and people that fake cancer with GoFundMe's. Okay, that's like, crazy. Y'all are not the next. GoFundMe. Don't go all the way to the. Don't make the like GoFundMe. Like sit down, two boys. Like we have about six months, so if you guys could just donate. And obviously, we would never do that. I heard they say at the beginning, just listen to your body that's all obviously we all feel pain or like oh who should I be worried my body told me like yo you want to just sit here and deal with this like there's no like, other option there's nothing like... else to do so the fact that other people were able to wait a couple days and then go check maybe it does feel different for everybody but for me uh, it's too much so thank god where'd you get this from you just took it oh yeah on the last day <laughs> they were like yeah you can change out of it and put on your clothes and then I like saw the new one that I didn't put on in the morning so I just put that in my bag this is probably in a skit or something. Yeah. Types of people with uh, appendicitis. Types of organ remover. Types of illnesses. Types of illnesses. Types of critical illnesses. Types of organ bursts that if they burst, you could die. And the first one is Noah. I'm glad I got to say this because I'm gonna look back on this when I'm feeling good and I'm yeah. gonna be like, damn. Dang, look at you now. Because I'm in the, still got a little bit to go, but appreciate you guys. We're happy that we can, we have a platform to even like speak and let you guys know what's up. But I mean, share all your stories, surgeries, whatever. Let me hear it. Stay healthy. Go to the doc. Get your checkups. Don't be like me. Now, I'm a hypochondriac, so I'm literally gonna go to the doctor. Yeah, I'm like, I wanna get the CAT scan. Like this, whatever. Oh. Give me all the scans. Scan me. <laughs> run the blood. Run, run my blood. Run me up. <laughs> what do I have, doc? <laughs> <laughs> Not because I'd be scared like they're they like say nothing. No, check. No, 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 check again. Check again. Check again. Give me those fluids. Give me those fluids for the scan. <laughs> what are we doing cat scan? Where's the drink? <laughs> Where's the drink? No, I got a drink. My friend just had had to drink three drinks for the cat scan. Bro, because but I'm a hypochondriac to the point where it's unhealthy. It's a hard line to walk of like, hey Ryan, stop worrying about it. But then it's like the well look what happened yeah. to Noah. Motherfucker, that shit bursting. <laughs> I didn't even know it was bursting until it was done. I'm like, bro, so that whole time I was on the bed. Oh. I'm also a butt ass naked. Just 
to give y'all the real effect of what I had to do. For yeah. I, I was just thinking about this. Like, we're YouTubers, whatever. No, we're nobodies. But I was thinking, no, obviously, had to, I don't know. You didn't go to urgent care. You went to a proper I went, hospital. I went to a proper hospital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just thinking about how every time I've been sick, all, any of us, we either go to the urgent care or the hospital and we just have to sit in the room with everyone else. Celebrities are like a, I've been saying like Post Malone. There's no way Post Malone goes to urgent care. You know he knows somebody who's like right this way. A special, yeah, you got to go to the speakeasy hospital like, that no one knows about. It's a real ego killer. Right when I think like, I'm really accomplished and I'm doing well for myself until it's, you're sick and then <laughs> You're it's, in the waiting room for three hours. <laughs> and it's like, get with everybody the fuck else. You are not special. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I, I thought the subscribers would mean something, but uh... But Doc, I got <laughs> 8 million. Doc, look, we're popular online. That doesn't mean anything. Express surgery, please. I'm verified. <laughs> Can I get the express surgery? But luckily, no, I got seen too in a timely manner. Wait, I got a gift for you to make you feel better. Let's see it. What's this? It's the new Strawberry Park Sherpa. It'll keep oh, you nice and warm because you know you have. I the, still have the chills a little. You bit. have the chills a little bit, so the, I thought this would be a nice gift oh, to give wow. you as you're recovering. Yeah, yeah, Strawberry Park is like that big brand, right? Yeah, yeah. And these are like oh, the, ex the exclusive, like, like Sherpa is like, like next quality. It's not, it's not design. merch. It's like a brand. Yeah, it's like a whole like streetwear oh, type of thing. Quality is crazy. The brown and the cream. Damn. Yeah, it's like different materials, like Sherpa. Wait, how do they, they even, even stitch this? Yeah, it's like good what quality the? stuff. Oh, these, oh wait, this. Unreleased. Yeah, these are unreleased. So oh they're gonna be God. dropping soon though. Wow, I gotta get me one of these. This is dope.